Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Giants. I hope you guys are having an awesome and wonderful day. It's another Saturday with another live Q&A. And today we have a very, very special um, subject, which is basically what type of products to sell after crisis or what the things that you need to look at as a products if you're in the uh, product research method, uh, product research uh, phase right now, what kind of product you look at, what type of category that you need to, because now the strategy is a little bit different and we really need to pay attention to what we're doing and we need to make sure that we're really selecting a good categories of good products that's going to do us very well for uh, the next at least one to two years, because that's what I anticipate the crisis or the recession or whatever struggle that we have that's going to last. And I think we have um, a very recession proof categories that we can sell in. And also I'm, we're gonna discuss that today because the last week, the whole week I was doing nothing except product research and made me think about what kind of categories, what kind of product I would like to sell. And I came up to a little conclusion at the same time. I had a lot of clients that were asking me, they're in the product research phase right now because they are, um, ready to launch products for uh, Christmas. So, I mean, you know, not Christmas only, but you know, the whole year, but also preparing for Christmas right now. So we were thinking about what the long uh, term products, what, what kind of long uh, term um, uh, categories that we can sell in that's really can become profitable because you always need to pivot. You need to adjust to any situation that you have, but hey, we're gonna talk about it. So if you're new to the channel, my name is Saad Basim. I am an Amazon FBA seller. I help people in their journey. And if you have any question, please leave uh, your comment below and I will be able to answer them. So if you don't know, every Saturday we have live Q&A. I start with a little subject. We talk a little bit and we get together and you ask your question and I will answer them. And also, that's a, uh, basically, we have already a thumbs down because I don't know why the guy didn't like my face yet or didn't like my uh, subject. Could be he or she. But hey, any uh, interaction with the YouTube channel is good. Thumbs up, thumbs down, whatever it is, is good. But if you're here and you want to give me a thumbs up, I'll be more than happy. And if you love the content, please subscribe. It will be awesome. So I hope you guys have a good morning. I'm really excited about today because I am really, 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 really excited about uh, Q3, Q4. And I really think we're going to do very well. And uh, with all the stuff that I'm doing right now with the product research and all the products that we have in the pipeline, I think I'm, I think I have, let's say around 25 products that are winning that I think really, really good opportunity. And I found around, if I'm not mistaken, around 23 of them, they're medium risk product, which is really, I'm very excited about. So I'm just validating, uh, not validating, I finished validation. Now I'm just doing some kind of, um, differentiation to think about which one is the best and I'm going to launch a few of them. And then when the class started, I'm going to give two of them away to people uh, that they're going to win the contest. As you know, we're going to launch the course hopefully very soon. And whoever going to join, they're going to um, enter the contest to win two validated product, differentiate already. They just get it, source it, it'd be good to go. So I'm very excited about that too. So let's get to it and see who we have here today. We have Nancy says, Good morning, Saad, Megan, and Giants. Happy Father's Day tomorrow. Um, thank you so much, Nancy. And yes, uh, Father's Day tomorrow. So I'm milking it the past few days uh, because my daughters, they don't know what tomorrow is. Uh, for them, it's Father's Day. It's coming weekend. They don't know when is the weekend. And every time I tell them, weekend is tomorrow, weekend is tomorrow, weekend is tomorrow. But believe me, uh, I've been milking it. I bought, I made them rub my back, which is I have very sensitive um, uh, a very weak spot for people rubbing my back and playing with my hair, even though I have no hair. And this is a new haircut, by the way, guys. I want to support a local, a local uh, barber shop that actually charged me twenty five bucks to make me a haircut that I am joining the army. But it is what it is. But hey, Father's Day, Happy Father's Day to everybody, and I hope you guys are doing awesome. And I hope your uh, kids spoil you and your wife also spoil you. And I'm very blessed to have a wonderful kids and wife that really support me uh and also we have joan murphy says good morning giants hope everyone's doing well i hope you're doing well joan thank you so much for being here it really means a lot to me guys and we have josiah say good morning and josiah in first in the next few days he actually uh going to the next few actually almost a week or something he's gonna be launching his product and i'm very excited about his progress I cannot wait to see what we're going to do with him. And we have my wife says, good morning. Good morning to you. And we have Danny, 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 Danny. Say hello, Sad. 
Danny. I'm going to keep saying Danny. I don't know who Danny is. But anyways, good morning to you. Thank you so much. And Leonard says, says hey, hello. And Doc says, good morning, Giants. Good morning to you, Ducks. And thanks for being here as usual. And uh, Ginger, <laughs> Ginger, I keep saying Ginger. <laughs> uh, we have uh, Nancy says, your prop usage is fireside. Yes, I have really think I got the best uh, method right now and the validation process and everything it really get back down. And as I told you, I'm very, very confident about the product research and also the validation process. Sad wife, spoil him every day. Yes. Um, good luck with your product launches. I could very nice to want for you to be nice to each other and very, very happy to see that. So let's get to it, guys, and let's talk about what type of products you should be selling. And I think um, it made me think a lot because I have we have a pro we have a product line in um, parties, decoration, and really doing very well right now. But during the recession, it really hit. I mean, not this recession. Uh, during the COVID-19 and what happened to it, it really hurt us. It hurt us. There was sales went to zero. And really, 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 um, for almost two months, uh, the, the brand basically has nothing. But as you as you remember, guys, I told you when first this the whole crisis happened, I was very, very careful to tell you guys, do not let this one to fool you. You need to be you need to be smarter. You need to be better prepared. And whatever crisis we have is going to pass. So whatever we have right now, whatever you had right now, I knew it's going to be two, three months. It's going to pass and everything's going to go back to normal. Now, the only thing is going to be affected is basically people's income. So if the employment rate is going to stay uh, high the way it is, I think we are going to have little bit people are going to be very selective about the product they buy. They're going to be less spontaneous about what kind of product they're going to sell. So we need to be very, very careful and we need to strategize from now because until now the effect of um, the recession or employment or people are not able to afford things is not going to happen right away. If you see in 2007, 2008, when the crisis happened, was 2008, 2007 was okay. The, the, after one year after the crisis and the crash, is actually the effect happened. So I, this is only my opinion. I'm not telling you, please go ahead and do that. I'm just telling you what I'm doing, what I'm thinking about every day. So now, uh, not every day, but you know, what I'm thinking about. So for example, uh, now we have this 2020. I believe nothing's gonna happen now, but we're gonna see a lot of things at the end of this year and also the beginning of next year. We're gonna see people are being affected around us and we're gonna see a little bit of things that are not doing well. I could be wrong. People are really hoping for V-shape uh, recovery. Uh, but I believe it's going to be U-shape, and I believe it's going to be elongated a little bit longer, and we are going to see some kind of hit. But what's nice about what we're doing, we're doing e-commerce, which means uh, a lot of people are depending on e-commerce right now. Uh, we just need to be very smart of what we're doing, and I believe in my heart we are going to be very well if we choose those right products in the right categories. So we uh, uh, actually we have discussed last week in our mastermind about uh, an article that Jungle Scout brought about uh, um, a buyer's behavior after COVID-19 and what they're doing. Uh, I'm going to link that uh, article down below in the link in the description. You guys go and go ahead and see it and read it for yourself, but I'm not going to read it. All what I, I'm, I'm focusing on is the categories today and the budget, uh, the budget or the type of products or prices that you need for a product that for you to be successful. Uh, because people are going to be very picky right now. So let's go ahead and share my little screen. Um, give me your love. Where are you? Oh, man, man, man. So guys, please don't forget to leave your questions. By the time I'm explaining my blah, 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 I'm talking to the world. Please, please, please leave your comments and I will be more than happy to answer them after we done. All right, so, 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 so. Okay, guys, so these are type of products. Please tell me if you can see them. They're gonna be a little bit blurry because I screenshot it, but I'm going to go through it with you guys to make sure that we're really, really doing the right thing. Now, we saw a big spike during, during COVID uh, in specific categories, so groceries, which is we know. Everyone was panicking, people were running out of uh, uh, bum bum uh, paper and uh, what happened is that a lot of demand happened on e-commerce because a lot of things that were sold out in the retail that we were able to find in the in the e-commerce we found it on Amazon so we had a lot of big jumps in groceries 
And then we had clean supplies, as you know, now, no matter what happens, the same thing as the people who are wearing the mask in the car, but by themselves, these are the same people who are buying cleaning supplies. I mean, I'm not saying do not buy clean supplies. I buy a lot of clean supplies. I bought a lot of wipe, disinfectant wipes. I bought a lot of Purell. So I'm the last one to judge, but uh, to have it, to have your, you know, to wear your, your mask in the car by yourself, it just a little bit, I don't know, crazy, but it is what it is. Cleaning supplies really did well because everyone thinking that they're going to catch the, the disease only from touching anything. And trust me, the first month was very, very worrisome. Uh, was a lot of, you know, a lot of, but anyways, you know, you know, you know, the gist of it, cleaning supplies really get a lot. Now, alcohol for sure went, went up a bit because if you know, everyone's staying home doing what, uh, they're doing nothing except just basically drinking. They're, uh, they're drinking or they're smoking or doing something that really, uh, make them forget about what's going on because really, really a lot of people, they cannot uh, handle the pressure. They cannot, uh, see the news and they're telling them you're going to die. There's a thousand people dying every day. And it makes them really, really, really scary. So the only way to forget is by using substance like alcohol and other kind of stuff. So there's a lot of spike in this stuff, but it's something I don't think you're going to sell on Amazon, but I'm just telling you what's going on. Now, the other thing we have over, over the counter medicine, we know that everyone doing vitamin C, blah, blah, blah. Uh, this is done, but here, health and beauty, health and beauty, also another category that really, it really spikes because Anything with personal care, anything that's taking care of yourself is going to have a good demand because people during crisis, uh, they look out to your to their health a little bit, much, much, uh, much. Um, uh, they take care of their health a little bit much better. They go go about it a little bit. They take it more seriously. Uh, and also the same thing uh, about personal care stuff. So basically, if you're uh, cutting your hair, uh, um, I don't know, scissors, uh, ironing, ironing stuff, anything for your personal care, because a lot of things were closed. And I believe health and beauty is going to spike you know, after, 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 uh, uh, during the crisis or after the crisis, because a lot of people are going to cut some kind of corners instead of going to the spa or instead of going to the to the hairdresser, they want to save the money, and I think they're going to buy a lot of things that's going to help them save money and do the things that they do uh, at home instead. And the best example, the haircut that I had yesterday, I paid 25 bucks for someone who basically didn't know what they were doing, and I had to recut it again when I came here. So uh, well, basically, I'm thinking about it the whole day yesterday. I'm going to cut my own hair from now, from now and then. Or whatever it is now pet supplies is another thing that i believe is going to be also big because people treat their dogs like their babies and uh i mean not dogs dogs cats whatever pet that you have is going to treat them like your baby and your companion and uh, i think a lot of people spend a lot of money on pet as well and actually this is one of the categories uh, health and beauty and pet that the things that i'm looking into right now but i'm looking for very very specific niches like i do not like people selling baby or pet products because they're very competitive but if you find a really specific niche within within that kind of category you'll be very well so as we find uh, with all the product research i did trust me it took me a lot a lot of time i mean i was doing nothing except only product research for a week and i'm i believe i'm experienced at this and what happened is that i really uh, uh, find a really good niche in pet that really good opportunity that I believe we can do very well with it but now I'm in the differentiation phase once I'm done that I will let you know more about it uh, exercise equipment we know all the gyms uh, is the same thing as health and beauty because people like to take care of themselves take care of the body the body fat um, whatever they need to do to exercise at home especially when gyms are closed exercise equipment they go high Every time this crisis, people start taking care of themselves. They have more time to do it. So exercise could be really, really, really good. And I know that in first hand because we have a product in, in, uh, in fitness and actually did very well because um, uh, people were really uh, getting into that niche and they're just buying a lot of things. And actually, if um, I don't know if I shared that with you or not. I had in my old house when I sold it, I had a gym at home, believe it or not. Believe it or not, I had a gym that I was just looking at and was a bench for not benching press. is more for uh, just putting boxes and stuff on top of it. And I actually, I listed it. Uh, I listed it for sale on Kijiji and within was the fastest sale I've ever, ever done in my life. Within uh, basically an hour, I sold it. The guy came, picked it up, and I made a thousand bucks just like that. So really, really exercise equipment is going to be good. But do not find me um, really like, hey, um, uh, 
uh, stretching, uh, uh, what's called these? Uh, I forgot what it is. Uh, the bands, uh, exercising band or stretching bands. Do not do something like that. Do something very specialized, something really uh, focus on a specific kind of sport. So, for example, if you get into something, uh, let's say into yoga, I will never say yoga, but do something specific like, hey, uh, get into uh, what's called that um, power lifting, let's say. Let's say we're doing something only for power lifters. We're doing something only for boxing. We're doing something only for ultimate fighting. Maybe doing something only jiu-jitsu. We're doing something only taekwondo. Whatever things are specific, do it. Do not go broad. Go very narrow and you'll be good to go. At the same time, we have toys and games. Toys and games, I mean, I cannot tell you. Toys and games have been selling. My retail and arbitrage was only toys and games, and we sold everything. We sold everything in uh, retail and arbitrage in the first in the first month and a half of the, the crisis. I sold all my inventory. I think over twenty-five or thirty thousand dollars was sold, and I didn't buy anything in retail arbitrage because I didn't go out out. I mean, out there and source. And I was in middle of the of the middle of the move so i don't have enough inventory at all uh in my uh retail arbitrage but hopefully when i settle down everything i'm gonna go back and toys and games is really good because toys and games during crisis after christmas people are gonna have birthdays people are going to buy stuff for the kids to to keep them quiet so toys and games is gonna be huge and actually that's for first time i look into toys and games as a category and um and yesterday i had um i i can tell you uh Really, I had already found five products that within toys and games that I'm going to build a brand around it. And I'm really taking it seriously like not right now about toys and games because I believe toys and games is recession proof. And people are going to have a few few dollars to spend to get toys and games to keep their kids, you know, shashi or whatever it is. So toys and games, I'm really considered seriously. I'm actually one of the products right now we are differentiating because I'm thinking about toys and games as a really really solid uh, category to sell in. Uh, now, uh, Toys and Games has some kind of things that you need to pay attention to. There's certifications that might be that might be happening. You need to make sure that whatever you're sourcing, it's really uh, a good product, you know, is not has no lead, lead. It doesn't have any issues with it. It's at the end of the day, it's going to be used by kids. So you need to be very careful. That's why I was away from it, shy away from it to sell it as a private label. But as a retail arbitrage was amazing opportunity. Uh, so what I'm thinking, I'm going to do it. I'm going to go through all the certification. Whatever I need to do, I'll make it happen because I really believe it's going to be a really, really good opportunity. Now, electronics, there was some spike in electronics, as we know, um, during uh, COVID. And I believe also after is going to be good. But I don't. Um, I made a mistake with electronics. I launched a product with electronics. No matter how much certification I got, no matter how good quality product I get, always i will have something wrong with it i always get returns i always have something wrong with it and i will i would i wouldn't do anything in electronics i'm talking about complicated things but if you find something that very 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 simple like remember the last week and you really i really believe you should watch the last week because the last few products that i mentioned they were really good opportunities and one of them was the jumping jack ropes with a counter with a digital counter and this actually uh, it's a very simple technology that I don't think anything is going to go wrong with it. It's the same thing with selling a fan. You know, a fan's been there, I don't know, for how many years. It's been, I don't know, 50, 60 years, a fan was invented and they perfected it. So nothing is going to go wrong. But when it comes to Bluetooth con connectivity, if it comes to a product that has some kind of very high tech or multiple components are running, is going to be an issue. If you have a touchpad, oh yeah, touchpad, really a lot of issues. A lot of movement so you need to be very careful with electronics and i really 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 believe you need to you need to make sure um when you source electronic you're top of it or very simple technology now other supplies this is this is very 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 controversial controversial category because a lot of people say hey a lot of people are not working so nobody's going to do anything in office but don't forget office products also for people who are creating offices at home so i believe even there was, I think there's a spike in office products, especially for things are tailor made for you at home. So um, there's one category that I believe people need to look into: camera and photo. It's one of the very, very um, uh, specific uh, category uh, that is going to be very well because it's related to office products. Because the things that we do right now, like now I'm doing this 
um, uh, uh, podcast now. I'm doing this webinar right now. And if you see that I have my mic, I have my camera, I have my lighting, if you believe it or not, I have lighting. And also I have a, a what's called that? A, a phone a holder. I have a laptop. I have a laptop stand. Uh, I have a keyboard. A lot of things that you have at home, uh, things that you're going to use for webinar that are going to be very well. And I think office products, you know, I think if people start using working at home as a strategy, it's going to be well. But am I confident about it? Would I pass, pass on it right now? Because I find there's other better opportunities. Yes, I would myself. But uh, I think still there is some kind of good good opportunities there. Now, clothing, as we know, all the stores are really closed. So for sure, during the crisis, people are shopping for clothes due, uh, for um, from e-commerce. But clothing has the highest rate of return because people buy their stuff that doesn't fit. They send them back. And really, it's headache for you because you need to have a prep center. You need to make sure you really do the product very well. Uh, you know, repackage them, make sure it's good, and send them back in. I feel it's headache because <clears throat> not only for returns, also for um, a product like um, they have a lot of sizes and variation, which is going to be a headache to handle. So now, these are the categories that I believe they're going to be very good. So I summarized them a little bit here. Um, oh, you know what? I'm not done yet. <laughs> so um, uh, so these are the same chart here with the clothing and all the spikes that you see. But here, the increase in the category. So we have groceries. As we said, I will never sell in groceries, especially if uh, I'm doing private label. I don't do it myself. I know a lot of people doing very well with it, but I don't do it. Uh, book and Kindle books for sure. I mean, I don't know. Um, I will never touch it. I don't know nothing about it. And I don't know if it's even possible to do it as a private label. Um, me can do actually. I had a client who had a baby, uh, not baby, a uh, kids book that he was selling, um, but it's very limited of what he can do in there. Uh, clothing, as he said, I told you the old variation and uh, return rate. I wouldn't do it, but toys and games, I believe, is a good a good opportunity. I am myself right now. I'm really, really considering toys and games. I'm vetted, uh, vetting those products that I have, not vetting, differentiating them. And I'm going to talk supplier. I'm going to see what I'm going to get, what kind of certification, what kind of stuff. But I really believe I'm going to start uh, Toys and Games uh, brand uh, because I believe it's going to be a recession proof regardless. People are not going to stop having birthdays. Uh, office uh, supplies, as we said, is, mm, you know, I'm going to put that in yellow just to make sure that we are, um, you know, I'm like iffy about it, half, half. Electronics, as I said, I don't do it because too much returns. Uh, fitness. Uh, yes, fitness is going to be very good. If you find a very specific niche, I think you're going to do well. Uh, fitness, basically, you know, is going to be awesome. Garden and outdoor, I think is going to... Actually, this one, I need to put it in yellow uh, because this one, it's really, really is going to do well because a lot of people doing uh, to keep their mind away from what's happening or even after, if God forbid, something happened, lost their job or whatever, they want to keep themselves busy. So you see they're doing a lot of gardening. They're doing a lot of things out, outdoor to improve their house or whatever things that they do just to keep themselves busy. I think it's very good, but you need to make sure you don't find a product that uh, seasonal. You need to find a product that really spikes the whole year, even if it de-spike or it goes down a little bit, but you want to make sure really overall is doing very well. So a sport, a garden outdoor, very good, but you need someone who needs to be a little bit experienced to check the seasonality and the demand during the year. Arts and craft, it's not mentioned there in their article, but I believe it's going to be good. Uh, I believe it's going to be really, really good. Actually, a uh, few products that I found uh, with, I'm telling you, I found a lot of products. So if I say I found this product, I found the product in each category, it, believe me, yes, is the truth. I'm not lying to you. It is what, it is what I found. I found... Two, uh, three products in arts and craft they are cheap. Uh, I think it's a very good opportunity to, to launch, and they have very low competition with a very high uh, quantity of keywords and demand. So I'm very happy and excited about it. One of the things is since the budget is not going to be much on them, it's very cheap products. They're not like 35, 45 pro, uh, price uh, price range. They are on 20 to 25, which is I'm okay if you find really good opportunities for lower price items. If you don't, you need to go higher so you can reduce your your, your challenges. But uh, Arts and Craft, I believe, is going to be very good. I think people created a lot of um, uh, habits, uh, skills about painting, about whatever they're doing. 
And I believe they're going to continue with that kind of skills and improving their own skills. So Artscraft, I believe, is going to be huge, 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 huge. Uh, health and beauty, as I said, is going to be awesome. I'm in supplement. I saw really good spike in sales. And that's why I'm adding multiple few products to it. But I'm actually, I told you I'm sourcing a few products to expand the brand that I have in the supplement, which is something I started just to prove myself and prove my clients we can do it. Um, actually, I'm just having a little bit of issues with um, with the listings itself to be up and also a little bit of issues with my new supplier to make sure that we're really at sync. So that's the only thing I'm having, but I believe I'm going to do it since the manufacturing lead time and turnout is very short because of I'm in the US, I believe uh, wouldn't uh, wouldn't hurt my cash flow as much. Uh, I think is going to be really, really cool. Now, so we talked about categories. Now, the second part, we're going to talk about the price of the items. If you see when I talk to you right now and I told you, hey, Arts and Craft, I found a product from 20 to 25, you know, um, uh, sells for that much. Why I'm, why I'm doing this? Because every time I talk to you guys, I told you, hey, uh, I need a product that at least sells uh, from 25 to 35 bucks or even higher because you will reduce your competition. But since the price is going to affect our um, our buyer's uh, decision and they're not going to be maybe as comfortable to buy things, I think we need to be very sensitive with our price and we need to make sure we don't find something really, 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 really expensive. So how are we going to do that and what are the things we need to do? As we know, all of us, the price, if you have a product that's cheap, spontaneous buy, spontaneous buy, people are going to buy when it comes to something really more expensive. People are not going to buy from the first time. They're going to buy maybe the second, third, fourth time. That's when they're going to buy. They're going to think about it, and then they're going to buy it. As I'm going to take it to a little bit extreme. Uh, let's say if you're going to buy a house or you're going to go buy a car, you're not going to go ahead, oh, I like this car. I'm going to buy it. You know what? I did that. I did that. But what I'm saying, you're not going to – most of people are not going to take that decision lightly. They're going to say, you know what? I'm going to sleep on it. I'm going to come after a week. I'm going to see what's up, and then I'm going to buy it. So the same thing with a product that are very expensive. People are going to take a little bit more time to think. So let's go ahead and see what 75 consumer would spend up to $100 for a product on Amazon. So look at the categories. I really believe they did a really good article. Um, uh, what's their name? Uh, Jungle Scout. And I believe you should read it all for yourself to get more knowledgeable. Uh, I will leave it in the link below. And... Uh, and uh, for you to read it. Uh, so now, 17% of people who are on Amazon, they buying less than $50 products. So they just go there to buy products that are from 50 bucks. 20% of people are buying from 51 to 100 bucks. So they're willing to go up to 100 bucks in price. So we have uh, 20 and 17, that's 37%. They're willing, I mean, no, actually, no, that's wrong. This is only 17%, 50. We have 20%, uh, 50, 51 to 100. So basically, we have 37%. They can buy up to 50, $50, that's for sure. Then we have 21%, which is buying from 100 to 25. This is really good margins here. You see, I mean, very good margins as a product, but also we have a big audience. They're actually selling the products at a higher price, and they're willing to buy it. So this is really, really cool. Then we have 19% who are getting from 20, 250, uh, one dollars to 500. And then we have 9% buy from 500 to 1,000. And then the 6%, which is 1,000. So if I was about to buy anything or I want to source anything, I'm going to stay within these ranges, these ranges. But I believe since, um, since this one, it's, for me, I believe anything below 50 is going to do well. I believe the percentages are going to increase much, much higher. And I think people are going to adjust how they spend their money and how to budget. And I believe $50 is going to be really awesome. Now, if they can spend up to 100 I don't think it's going to be an issue. Uh, but I don't think I will push it more than this. Now, there's a strategy where you can go ahead and find a product that's a little bit uh, more expensive and you sell a few units a day, one unit a day, or... I don't know, 30 units a month, and you make a few thousand bucks uh, because this kind of strategy, not working on high demand product, you're looking at a low demand product with low competition, higher price, sells for a little bit, uh, uh, a little bit over time. I think you're going to do well. So for me, guys, I really know what the recap is. Basically, these are the categories that we're going to do. 
and also this is what uh, people are going to be buying on Amazon. So let me come back to my fluffy giant. Where's my fluffy giant? That's the fluffy giant. All right, guys. So tell me what you think. Give me your opinion. Uh, tell me, hey, Sad, I think this and that. Tell me what you were, when you were looking for products, what are the things that you were looking at, what kind of categories, uh, what kind of um, budget you were thinking about, um, and also what kind of pricing. And also tell me a little bit about, you know, leave it in the comment, leave it here. Let's talk about it all together. I'm not the only one here is talking. I know all of you are working behind the scenes about multiple products or you're working on a few things. So I want to make sure we are all at sync. We're making sure that, you know, Give me your feedback and we'll talk about it and see what's up. So, 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 let me go ahead and see what we have here. We have uh, Clan Kher. Uh, Kher Kher says, hi, Sad. Hi, everyone. Hi to you, Kher. Very happy to have you here, man. It's been a long time. I hope everything was well with you. And I hope it's, everything is well with you and your family, man. Okay, Denny says, hey, Sad, is there a way to tell if you're talking to supply instead of an actual manufacturer? Look, if you're using Alibaba, I believe maybe 80 to 80 percent or 70 percent or higher. I don't know the percentage, but I know it's a very, very high percentage. Most of them are going to be trading companies because the factory themselves is very hard for you to get a hold of them uh, because they don't have an export uh, license. And also the factory themselves, they're not going to have someone who speaks English and they're not going to have a sales department that dedicated to uh, English speaking uh, people. So what they do, they hire they hire trade trade uh, trading companies. Trading companies they go there and they have the export license and they go ahead and they do everything they need. So they go ahead, uh, they communicate with you. They get a good price. They make a little bit, but the factory is happy. The trading company is happy, and you're happy. There is nothing wrong with dealing with trading company. Actually, they can go the extra mile. They might have more connections. If you do differentiation, if you do things that really combine things together, I believe. The trading company is going to go the extra mile. They say, hey, I want to, I don't know, I want to buy this phone from one factory and then I'm going to buy that case from someone else. The trading company will be able to get all that together for you. So I'm really, 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 um, I'm really, um, I really believe the trading company is not a bad thing. Now, how to know a manufacturer or how to know that someone who is presenting this company is actually manufacturer? Uh, it's very hard to do it, but I did an Ali, how to source from Alibaba without getting a scam. And I really believe you should watch it. It's almost an hour and a half. And I went very, very in details. But what you need to do, basically, you go to the, you go to Alibaba. That's one of the things that you can do. Go to Alibaba, search the product, make sure it's a gold supplier. Uh, go ahead, hit, um, see they've been in business for over a year or two years. Hit, hit their profile, look at the back end, see see what kind of product they're selling. If they're selling the same kind of products over and over, uh, you should be good to go. Um, if they see that, no, they're selling toys and then they're selling also bathroom kit, you know they don't have the capability or the manufacturing capability to do both. So you know they're trading company. But uh, most of the time, if you trading company, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, wouldn't at all uh, give that much importance because I really believe if they're giving you the right price, the right quality, the right service, you should be good to go. So, but hey. Everyone wants to say, no, perfect. I need to find the manufacturer because I'm going to get the right thing. It's not true. It's not true. Uh, Megan says, low, our world famous Olympic gym. Yes, it was a good flip though. Yes, it was a good flip. Yeah, we bought Olympic gym. I don't know. It was a good week though. It was a good week of burn, man. I burned a lot for a week, but then, yeah, it was a bench. Uh, <laughs> but it is what it is. Uh, Leonard says, place my first order onto looking for next product. Very, very good job, Leonard. Very happy for you, man. Finally, how do you validate that, that there is a demand of product? There's nothing on Amazon like it. How do you determine the price you can sell? If you find, if you sell a product that's not exists in Amazon, you basically, you're toast. I believe you're, if there is not demand on Amazon for this product, I believe you're, you're in big trouble. And I'm sorry to say that, but I think you're in big trouble. I believe what you're saying, and I hope what you're saying, it's what I think you're saying, is basically you're saying, I have a product, uh, there is a demand for it, but you came up with a different spin or you came up with a customized product, yes. Uh, but if you're brand new, I will never recommend it. I will never do it myself because all what the products or how we launch products is depending on demand, depending on, uh, uh, depending on de demand, and also depending on uh, keyword search volume. If you don't have that, you're screwed. So I hope you didn't do that. 
Uh, but you know, validation process. Hopefully, I will I will only share that in the course because it's really special method that I have, and I cannot just share it like that because it really took me a lot of time and years to be able to put it all together. Um, could you go into a bit detail on how you value a product? Is a good product to go? I told you again, I will do it only in the course for the validation. But look, product research and product launch. This is one of the things that very special. Uh, special and everyone has their own method um, and I really would like to keep that for the people who are interested in the course because it's really uh, I mentioned a lot how to launch product how to do product research how to validate it also quickly but the special special method that I have that really give you really peace of mind according to data uh, this is I'm going to keep it a little bit uh, to myself and to the people who are in the class uh, just because this is where it really shines that's where it's gonna make them really good um, how did you go about finding all these products? I uh, I have a lot of methods. I have I think if I'm not mistaken, Nancy you can correct me. I think we have nine. Uh, okay, I'm gonna say, but I'm I think we have from nine to twelve method of how to find products. It's things that you know, sometimes things you don't know of product research, but I have them all there that I'm going to share once we launch the course, which is in a few weeks. So I'm just waiting for the sales page to be done, and I will do it. Um. Kevin says, uh, here says, what's Kijiji? Yeah, it's a basically like Craigslist that we have in Canada. Um, let me see. Now I, I bought a new laptop and it's really fast. So I can do multitask, man. Uh, let me see here. I'm going to share my screen. Oh, no. I just three. Okay, so this is the one Kijiji here. So it's a website for us for uh, Craigslist. Is it uh, like a Greg list uh, that we go through everything? Uh, you can buy things and whatever from local stuff. And uh, yeah, this is it. Uh, Leonard says, You make a good point with all that. Makes sense. What's your thought on the home deco uh, products for future? Home decoration. Look, this is my thought about home improvement and products that for home i believe they're always going to be good because whoever works and they have let's say they work they work 40 40 hours a week i believe anybody who has a home when they come back home they want to feel it's home so they wouldn't mind spending something to organize their house because that's kind of therapy it's kind of hey i have my uh shelves i have my i have my uh paintings i have my stuff just looking at them maybe it calms you down because whatever you bought it's going to resemble something. So for me, when you saw me, guys, I had my Muhammad Ali signed uh, uh, shorts. These are real shorts signed by him. It makes something. It means something to me. That was the first memorabilia that I bought are very expensive and reminds me of how to be tenacious, how to be able to go and get it. And every time I look at it, it makes me feel that I can do it. There's some moments uh, that you get in your life or uh, in spe specific days that what the hell I'm doing, or are you going to start doubting yourself? By having this affirmation or having this stuff there, it's going to remind you of what their success, what they have done, and what you can capable of do. If they're able to achieve the impossible, I believe you can achieve a little bit of something small, not to the degrees that they did. So I'm not telling you I'm going to look at Muhammad Ali and going to think I'm going to be Muhammad Ali. Uh, I just, the belief of how we're able to fight to get to where they are makes me believe that, hey, I can do it. Whatever hard day I have today, is going to pass. So I believe home decor is going to still be strong. Uh, and also the prices are not that expensive. So people are going to buy them. I don't think it's going to hurt in the future. Um, but, you know, um, uh, this is my opinion. Uh, this is my opinion. Uh, so this is what I'm thinking. Um, and there's one point also, I just want to make sure. Leonard, you said... Um, you think about launching a new product. This is the newbie mistakes you will ever have. Anybody who's launching a product and they just still didn't launch and think about the second product they want to launch right away, you're going to fail because you're not going to give attention or pay attention to the first product and give it the love that you need to make sure the product is going to succeed. So if you are going to have a product and you work on another product, you're not going to give your full attention to this product because you're looking at another supplier, you're looking at differentiation for this product and all this stuff. I believe if you really, really want to do well, go ahead, take your product, launch it well, make sure you become profitable before you launch the other product. Unless you, the money is not an object for you 
Anyone launch this, go ahead. But if you don't have the experience, you cannot. Now, when I say I'm launching for your products, I have done this crap over and over so many times. So I know I can handle it. I know the expertise that I have to be able to give the love to this specific product. Uh, I know how to validate the product. I know how to do product research. I know how to validate it. I know how to source it. I know how to launch it. Okay, I know how to run PPC. All of it, me. I can do this stuff. But some people are going to be overwhelmed if they don't know how to run the PPC, how to do the launches, how to do this stuff. They are going to suffer. So I want to make sure you do yourself a favor, finish launching this product, get it to where you want, and then think about the other one. Now, if you have products in the pipeline, I'm okay with that. Like us, when we got those 37, uh, 40 products, um, for, for, uh, 40, uh, 43 to 47 products, we actually have it in the pipeline. So I... I categorize them green. That means are the one really, really cool that I can knock them out very quickly and then have the yellow, which is mean yellow product. That means these are the product that, hey, I need to think about them once I finish with the green. And then you have the orange, which is the ones later on. So I have it all blend out in groups, each brand, each brand, each brand and the pipeline. Yes, but doesn't mean I'm going to launch it right away. You know, uh, you will be fine. Um, you can make some points. Uh, okay, this is got it. Leonard says, I'm thinking of launching second product with my second order. Do you think this is a good idea? What did you do when you started getting into Amazon with launching a new product? I will never launch a new product um, just like that. Like, look, I showed you the supplement product. We, we were making thirty to forty thousand dollars. Now it dropped down because I have problems with my supply chain uh, because I changed suppliers. So now we are around twenty two, twenty three thousand dollars a month, and I still didn't launch an, another product. Uh, uh, I didn't launch a new product right away. This is only me. Why I'm saying that? Because I want to establish very good a product first, make it really up there what I want, and then launch the second one. I think, guys, you're underestimating how much marketing you need. If you put in your head, if you put in your mind, okay, let's get into this. If I do a launch process and I have a product, and let's say, let's say, just for fun, we're doing five products a day, times 30 days so if you want to do a giveaway and you want to do very very cheap five i think you need 10 but let's say five okay that's going to bring to 150 units given and let's say this product costs you 10 bucks that's 1500 dollars you're just giving away this is plus this is only a cost of product so let's get to this one you know what i really would like to get to this one to explain it to you so you can see what kind, what's hidden. It's not like, oh, cost of product, we're good to go. My life is good. No, 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 no. Where am I? Give me a second, guys. I'm just trying to figure out my life. All right. So, so I have five dollars, like five, five products a day. I'm gonna give for thirty days. Let's say that's one hundred fifty uh, a product a month. I'm telling you, for you to be able to launch very well, it's going to take you maybe two to three months. I'm talking two to three months. Now, you might not give a product every day, but you might give it for 14 to 20 days, but it's still going to be cost. Okay. And also, don't forget the cost of your PPC when, you, when you're when when you you're launching a product is going to be 100, 200% if you do it correctly. If you're not going to do it correctly and you're going to optimize from day one, you are going to be uh, really... Um, you're going to be missing out on a lot of opportunities. So let's say that's 150 times $10, the cost of the product. That's 1500 bucks. And let's say you're going to do, um, uh, you're going to hire agency. If you hire agency like ours, it's going to be a thousand bucks just to launch your product, uh, to target your keywords. If you were uh, to do it yourself and you do a Facebook ad, let's say, uh, I believe, let's say $20 a day, maybe. So we have fifteen hundred plus twenty dollars a day uh, times thirty. Let's say that's six hundred. So twenty one hundred bucks. That's minimum. You're doing. I mean, minimum. I'm, I believe you're really gonna have more units to give. But this, I'm being very conservative. Twenty one hundred dollars just to start. This is very very basic. I believe you're going to be spending more than this to be able to launch the product. But once you get there and you rank for most of the keywords. You're going to sales are coming and you're going to be good. So I always show people this graph and I tell them how, when you launch, what's going to happen when you launch, this is a line. Okay. You're going to launch. Oh, we're going, we're going educated boys and girls. 
Look, this is what's going to happen. You're going to launch it. You're going to be here. And then you're going to drop down, drop down, and drop down. Because this is your, you're starting off. You're coming down. You're launching the product. You are be losing money. This is I'm talking about the money. You're going to be regular, come down, losing money, losing money, losing money. And then slowly, slowly start ranking, getting more reviews, ranking, getting more reviews. Then you're going to spike up, spike up, spike up. Spike up, then you're gonna blot to a bit, and you're gonna go like this. This is how it's going to be. You're gonna go from here, you're gonna go down because you're you're trying to make the money, blah blah blah. And then once you start ranking for more keywords, getting more reviews, more established, then you're gonna start making the money. It's gonna plateau at one point that you cannot make more because depending on the market cap, but that's what's gonna happen. So for me, you need to know this: the dip that we're gonna have here, this dip. We don't know how much is going to be this dip. That's going to be depending on your product. This is, uh, that is going to be uh, depending on the cost of the product. It's going to be on depending on uh, uh, the uh, uh, what's the, uh, how many keywords you're trying to rank for, how competitive the market. All this is going to affect this and how much it's going to cost you. So you need to pay attention to this. Very, 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 very important. And do not get overexcited. I believe launch your product, see what happens with your life, and then you will uh, decide on the second, third product. If you have it in the pipeline, yes, but not more. I actually just met yesterday a client of mine, and uh, I'm very happy for him. We chose the product for him, and uh, you know, I was mentoring him for a while. I was very, very tough on this guy, very tough on this guy, and uh, because I really want him to learn it the right way. He was very excited. He wanted to launch so many things at the same time. Um, he actually ha was in another, another. Uh, he launched like five products before that and they all sucked. And I told him, if you want to do the right way, my way, you need to be very patient and we need to do it the right way. And he called me yesterday. He was like, hey man, I sold out everything. I'm selling very, very well. And I made last, last month, I made $25,000 and I'm very happy and thank you. And I would like to uh, get another session with me. So he got another session with me. Uh, he was doing mentoring for uh, three months or four months. And after that, he just called me because I don't want you guys to be depending on me for the whole time. I will do two, three months with you. Then I'll teach you how to fish. And then you go. He came back to me. He's like, hey, I know what he did. And he actually did something that wasn't that great because he actually was. Uh, I found the product for him and he went somewhere else. And then he came back to see that, hey, what I was telling him is the truth. And what happened? He made that money. Now he's in the next order. That's. I mean, his second order that he's going to be, it's in the States already. So he's going to be selling really, really well. And we discussed yesterday about how we launched the next product or the third product. So we're in the product uh, research method, that we product research with him to find him two more product or one more product that he feels comfortable to, that he can add to his product line. So why I'm saying this, because the first product, I had to make sure that he really get a grasp of it. He rang for it, make sure everything is good before he launched the second and third. I think underestimation here. You're underestimating a lot of things. And you, guys, I'm not. I'm talking to everybody here. Do not underestimate how much work because you will be really, really. Um, you're gonna be over your head and you're gonna lose money. Uh, Ricardo says, "Good morning, guys. I'm late. No worries, Ricardo. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your support. And also, don't forget, there's always replays, and I always, you know, love me some." Uh, you know, some likes and you guys watch it again. Let me know your thoughts, leave a comment and I'll be more than happy to answer them. What else we have? We have, uh, Sal also has a video on YouTube for sourcing product and it's very informative. Yes, yes, I did. I think the one, and I also said it at the time I did that video. I was like, if I had a course at that time, I was like, whatever I shared with you in Alibaba is going to be the same in the course. So whoever joined the course, they know this is going to be in the course because is the same method. It's really a one deep, like an hour, an hour something only of how to source a product from Alibaba. You can imagine how much I put in it. Saren says, hey, so product very, uh, with very good quality compared to competitors, how do I express my qualities? Okay, very good question, very good question. Uh, now, a product with high quality, they're gonna present themselves very well because they're well, well. So the only time you're gonna be able to express if they have it in their hands, but, you can do very well before that. So what I recommend you do, you need to mention the best quality in your listing. 
So sometimes if it's really like something, let's say I found, um, okay, you yeah, know, uh, okay. Okay, I'm gonna go back to my, my case. So let's say I'm selling this and this is a case and everyone looks at it like, oh my God, um, yeah, it looks good in the paper or looks good in the image, but it's very thin, not good. So let's say all the comments were selling bad things about this, about the uh, about uh, the case itself. So what you can do in this case, you can put in a title, heavy duty case made with excellent product if you want. But now you need to be very careful how to choose uh, keywords in the title. Very, 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 very important. But I believe using heavy duty sometimes, even if it's not has high search volume, I think you still will be able to be good with it. Like for example, I have a client of mine, we launched his product, I'm managing his uh, accounts and uh, I'm managing his pro product, sorry. And what happened is actually I just added heavy duty to his product and we get this exponential growth. And I'm telling you, he was very happy. He was selling maybe two, three units. Now he's selling 18, 18 units a day. So what we did, we did, we explained that into the title or bullet points. In the images, I focus very, very, one image, only about high quality, high quality product from high quality uh, supplier or quality a brand. And then I mentioned what's the good quality about it. Hey, made out of this product. Uh, look at this feature here on the corner. It's more material or hey, perfect fit for your phone, whatever it is, I mentioned in my images. If you do that and you do that in enhanced brand content, I, be, I believe you will be good and you'll be good to go. Uh, so use your images wisely, use your uh, use your use those good things that you did in your title on your bullet points, but do not add more things. Like do not explain your life story about how good your product in the title. You're gonna, you're gonna lose because you need to be, the title has to be um, more oriented towards keywords and search volume and uh, it's very important but if you add one keyword that really changes like organic uh, heavy duty um, uh, expandable telescopical whatever you want to do you can do that in there but one keyword not like explain all in there it's gonna hurt you all right I hope that answers your question Saran if you have any follow-up question please reach out to us in the comment I'll be more than happy to help you da -da, da -da. I work like for airline now all right. Uh, just to clarify, first product has demand. I'm asking. I'm asking for the second product. I'm looking at. It's a slight variation to one in the market. I'm trying to work out if people will buy the variation. Yes. So if you see that people are buying the variation, you might you might be able to do it. But I cannot give you an opinion if I'm not able to see the product and to see what's going on with it. So, uh, but yeah, as I told you, do not rush into it. Make sure you do your your. Uh, your homework before before you're launching a second product or launch the first product. Make sure you launch it well before you do anything. Trust me on this one. Trust me on this one. Uh, we have excellent content like always. Maria Roman, how are you? Very happy to see you, Maria. You know, Maria, she's a lovely woman. I when I met her, she's she's just like the person that you always want to hug. You know, like she's just very inviting person, very nice, very talkative. She's very social. I love Maria Roman. We love you, Maria Roman. Thank you so much for your uh, kind words. And I appreciate that. I really appreciate that. So guys, I think today we covered really important subject. And I think a lot of you need to think about those things because I'm thinking about them. And now if you see the kind of content I'm doing, it's more about related to what I do because I run out of, um, I run out of content because I don't know how to bullshit. So I'm not going to come here and tell you, hey, leave nine to five and let's build that business in two months. I cannot do this or I cannot bullshit my way. Everything that I need to do, I need to make, at least I'm giving you content. At least I'm giving you something that's going to help you because that's what's the purpose of the whole channel, to be able to help other people, to give you the content that I as much as I can. Uh, but there's some stuff that limits me of giving me everything. Uh, but I'm giving you really, really solid information, very straight to the point. And that's what I'm going to do now. Since we're launching a few products, I might be able to do things that comes up while I'm doing my product research. Something comes up while I'm doing my variation and we'll be able to do it together. And if you have any any subject you would like to discuss, please, let's go ahead and do it and uh, let's get it done. And I'm very, very excited about Q3, Q4. Please, please, from now, prepare for your um, Q4 prepare for uh, finding products that are really with high potential right now because you don't want to miss out on Q4. I know it's too early. I know some of you just taking the summer uh, summer vacation or doing whatever you want to do, 
but now is the time. Trust me, now is the time. Now is the time. You got to do it, guys. I'm telling you. And if you don't believe me, you will know. A few months like, oh, my God, already September. And I cannot get the product here by the end of October. What I'm going to do, son? I don't know what you do. I said, I'm going to say, I told you so. You know, do it from now. Trust me, from now is the best thing to do. All right, let's see. I have a few things here. Son says, use terms in bullet point like superior design, improved design, unlike competitor or improved design features. Helpful not to be confused with keywords. 100%. I mean, you're taking an advice from Nancy, which is basically she's the one who who makes my English into proper English, and uh, and I, I agree with her 100%. Uh, yes, so many good reminders. Thanks, Saad. Thank you so much, Brunella, for being here and your help. Um, but I don't know what to tell you guys. I, I, I am very excited of launching the course very soon, and I think it's going to be awesome. It's going to be interactive. I'm very, very excited to see the first people who are going to join. And we have very good stuff for you guys. Some of you are going to get uh, up and running right away with a product that they're going to have. And I'm going to teach you everything that we know. And I'm not going to hold back, as you know. So stay tuned to that. Hopefully, I'll be able to have things done by Wednesday. I just spoke to the guy, uh, to the marketing. They said they're supposed to have things ready by uh, uh, Tuesday. So once that happens, hopefully Wednesday, I will announce a few things or next Saturday. But stay tuned to that. And I really appreciate your support. I really appreciate everything that you you guys do. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your like. So if you like, give it a thumbs up. And if you love it, subscribe. I stole that from someone else, by the way, just to let you know, from another YouTuber. So, guys, thank you so much. Have yourself a wonderful, wonderful day. Uh, happy Father's Day to everyone. Uh, all the fathers out there, I feel you. And uh, I hope your family spoil you. And have yourself a wonderful, wonderful day. Thank you, everybody. Love you all, Giants. Take care.